In this video, I'm going to be going over some useful set methods and continuing to talk about sets uh, more detailed and showing you some more advanced things that you can do with them. If you haven't seen my previous video just talking about how a set works, it's an unordered uh, unique data set or collection of elements, sorry, um, I recommend you go watch that. If you already know about sets, then just stay here and I'm just going to go through some really useful methods and pretty much the ones I'm going to talk about are here right in this little box. So feel free to just read through them and kind of experiment with them yourself, but if you want a more or like in-depth kind of tutorial on them, uh, then watch through the whole video. I'm going to go through what all of these do and how they work. So sets are really useful in Python because they come with a lot of uh, methods. And if any of you guys are in linear algebra, then you know that there's a lot of things you want to do with sets like subsets, supersets, differences, intersections, unions, um, and those can be annoying to have to code yourself. So yes, you can code them yourself just using typical lists but these sets allow you just to type like one method and have it all done for you and it saves you a lot of time. Uh, it also just looks cleaner in your code. So I'm just gonna start by creating two sets. So I'm just gonna say S is equal to, let's do like one, two, three, uh, seven, eight, and why not just add a little string in here? We'll do a test. I'm gonna do a set T and I'm gonna set this equal to three, four, five, eight, nine, um, test like this, okay? Now, one of the most useful um, methods that you can use on sets is, uh, I would want to say intersection. And intersection is going to give you the most, uh, or any elements that are in both of the sets. And this is really useful and there's a lot of applications, so I'll show you how you can do it. So you can do s dot intersection of t, like this. And what this is going to do is it's going to return a new set containing all of the elements that are common within the set. So when I do that, you see we get eight test and three, and those are because they occur in both sets. Another one that's really uh, useful is union. And what this does is it simply just um, combines all of the elements in the set together. So if I do s.uniont, then you can see we get all of the elements um, combined together. And notice because it's a set, we don't have any duplicate elements. It just finds ones um, and just like mushes these uh, two sets together. Another one that's useful is is subset. Um, so I'm going to just create a small set I'm going to say like SS is equal to like one, two, three. Uh, that's not a set, is it? It's a list. My bad. Because we're not going to be able to use this on list. So SS equals that. And we'll just do like TT equals and let's do one, two. Now, if we want to determine if TT is a subset of SS, um, there's a way that we can do this. We can say is, uh, is subset is actually the method. So say SS or tt dot is subset of ss and that gives us a true value and the way that this works is it pretty much finds and or it looks at tt and says are all the elements in tt also contained in ss and if they are then that means this is indeed a subset of the set ss okay so let's do this again except let's just change these around so ss uh, is ss a subset of tt well i'll let you guess by having a look and the answer is no. And that is because if we look at SS, is every element in SS in TT? No, it's not. So this is gonna give us a false value. Now, another one that we can use is is superset. And it's kind of just like a reverse of this. Um, so if I do SS dot is superset of TT, now it's gonna check and see if all of the elements in TT are in SS. So it's doing the same thing as is subset, just kind of in reverse. So it's giving us a true value now. Um, so that means that this contains all the elements that are in like the lower bound set kind of. So again, if we flip this around, we do TT SS, uh, we get false, okay? So another one that's really useful is difference. And what difference is gonna do, it's gonna give us all the elements that are in one set, but are not in the other. So if I say S dot difference, I'm gonna go back up to these top sets now and use these s dot difference of t, then we get a set of one, two, and seven. So these are the elements that are in s that are not in t. And same thing if we do t dot difference s, then we get the elements that are in t but are not in s. And again, that's useful as well. You want to find elements that aren't uh, common to both sets. Now we can also do something called a symmetric difference. And what a sym symmetric difference does is it's going to find elements that aren't in either of the sets. Okay, so if we do symmetric difference of t, then we get one, two, four, five, seven, nine. And the way that symmetric works is it finds the elements that like aren't in common with the set. So you can see one does not exist in this set, 
Um, two does not exist in this set. Uh, three does, so we don't get three. And four, well, that doesn't exist in the other set, so we add four. Five doesn't exist in the other set, so we add five. Seven, uh, eight does exist, so, not, so it finds all the elements that are not common in both of the sets and combines them into a new set. Now it's uh, good to notice here, what these are doing is they're returning us a new set. And we can see that because they're um, printing it out to the screen. So it's not actually changing S and it's not changing T and I can prove that S uh, and T, it's just returning a new set. Now the last one I'm gonna show you, uh, this is pretty straightforward. Since sets are mutable, sometimes you may wanna make a copy of them um, and you can't actually, or I'll, I'll test, but I'm pretty sure you can't do something like this. So I said H equals S colon yeah we get an error so that would be how you copy a list so how do you copy a set the way to copy a set is through h is equal to s dot copy now for any of you guys that are a bit more advanced this is creating a shallow copy of s you don't have to know what that means but i'm just giving it to you guys in case that means something to you um so that's how you would make a copy so now if you change something in h so it's like h dot remove uh what's in s let's see like one and we print h and then we print s we can see we did not end up changing S because we made a copy. Anyways, so that's been it for some of these useful set methods. If any of you guys are in linear algebra, I hope you appreciate these um, because coding these can be kind of difficult um, and also just take a lot of time. So these methods save you a ton of time and uh, just help you out when programming. Anyways, that's been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in another one.